Good afternoon. We welcome you to worship this afternoon at the Church of Our Lady of Lourdes. Whether you worship with us regularly or whether you're just visiting with us today, whatever brings you here, wherever you're at on your faith journey, we welcome you. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Assumption. We recall that Mary, because of her special role in God's plan of salvation, was assumed, <coughs> assumed body and soul into heaven. We join Mary today in praying to our God, and we pray as we always do in the name of our God, who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And as always, as we come for worship, we pause briefly as we begin, aware of our failings and our sinfulness. We ask our God that in the Eucharist we share, that we might know again God's presence, the forgiveness of our sins, and God's peace. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary, and so we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father, and so we pray, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd who leads us all into everlasting life, and so we pray, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, <clears throat> forgive us our sinfulness, and bring us all to life everlasting. And as we gather today, let us give our God praise as we sing our God's hymn of glory. And let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul into heavenly glory. Grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers in her glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, to devour her child when she gave birth. 
So she gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had place prepared by God. Then a loud voice in the heavens say, now we have salvation and power come and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign, until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord.
is taken up to heaven. A chorus of angels exalts. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. <clears throat> the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. As I mentioned at the beginning of our service, today we celebrate the Feast of the Assumption. From the earliest centuries of our church, Christians have celebrated this Feast of Mary. Now, our knowledge of this feast comes to us from our tradition. The story of Mary's Assumption into Heaven is not found in the scriptures. Yet that doesn't diminish the value or the importance of this feast for us. I'd like to suggest that this feast reminds us of two very important beliefs in our Christian tradition. First, this feast reminds us that Mary now shares the fullness of life with God in heaven. Very specifically, what that means for us is that with the assumption of Mary into heaven, Christ's victory over sin and death is made real for us in that one like ourselves has experienced resurrection and the fullness of life. Today's feast then celebrates the beginning of the fulfillment of Christ's promise to all believers that they would have eternal life. Second, this feast speaks to us of the ultimate destiny of all believers, where it celebrates that which we profess each week in our creed, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. The assumption of Mary reminds us that the glory of Mary will be the glory of all believers who strive to remain united with God. As we celebrate this Feast of Mary today, then let us remember and praise Mary for her special role in God's plan of salvation. But let us also acknowledge and celebrate the gift of heaven that is offered to all believers. And let us pray that we will live so as to be made worthy 
to share in the joy of Mary and all the saints in the kingdom of heaven. Let us stand now. And together let us profess our common beliefs. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Believing that our God is present with us and among us, as we gather in our God's name, let us turn to our God now with our prayers of intercession. May Pope Francis and all priests serve the Lord as humbly as Mary did, so that they may bring all of God's holy church to salvation and glory in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May Our Lady, who sang of God's power in raising up the lowly, stir up in all people a reverent love for all of God's children on earth. We pray to the Lord. As we celebrate the new Ark of the Covenant being raised up to heaven today, may all hearts recognize the gift of Christ in the Eucharist with reverence and joy. We pray to the Lord. May we all strive to surrender as fully to the will of God as our Blessed Mother. We pray to the Lord. May this feast of Mary's triumph be a blessing on all those who know sorrow and suffering as she did. We pray to the Lord. For all who have fallen asleep in Christ, especially Ralph Strangis, may they be crowned in glory and rejoice forever with Mary and all the saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Gracious God, hear the prayers you have spoken. Know well, though, the prayers of our hearts. Send forth your powerful love into our lives. May your love make us what you have called us to be. Grant this, we pray, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to our Almighty God. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through your Son, Jesus Christ. For today, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your Church's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort for your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so, in company with the choirs of heaven, we praise you this day, Lord, as with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, <clears throat> for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer to you, Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with Bernard Hebda, our Archbishop, and Joseph Williams and Michael Eisen, our Bishops. Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and the martyrs, and with all of your saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever. to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Take a moment and share with those near us some sign of that peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Jesus Christ, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received this sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharist is ended. Let us go in peace. <laughs>